Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a brand new empties for you guys and this is gonna be a long one, so buckle in. <laughs> There's a lot of products in here. I feel like I'm like a month overdue filming an empties video. I usually do these videos every other month or so and I will have my playlist linked in the description box down below if you wanna binge more videos like this, but let's dive right in. Let's start with one of the big things on top. I went through a bottle of the Live Clean liquid hand soap. This was in the gingerbread latte scent. This I purchased over the holidays. Obviously it's like a holiday scent. The Live Clean hand soaps are my absolute favorite, particularly the moisturizing liquid types. I have the foam ones at home right now and I don't love them as much. I find them to be way more heavily scented and the smell really lingers. These are just really softly fragranced they're really moisturizing. They don't dry my hands out. They're 98% plant-derived ingredients, cruelty-free. It's a Canadian brand, all the great things. The gingerbread latte scent in particular was not my favorite. Um, I don't know, I just tired of it pretty quick. I don't usually go for like holiday scents, especially these like spicy ones. If I was gonna go for a holiday scent, typically I would go for like a candy cane or like peppermint type of situation but I do really recommend these if you're looking for a good drugstore hand soap these ones are my favorite okay continuing on with sort of body care I went through a tube of the hemp touch of summer daily moisturizer so this is their like gradual tan type of moisturizer it's very similar to like the Jergens uh, gradual tan lotion I do really like this it doesn't have like a self tan like smell to it. it actually has a really pleasant scent to it even as it wears it doesn't have that thing where it turns and it starts to smell like pennies or something um, so I do really like this I do sell this in the salon I had one on the shelf and I was out of lotion at home and I was like you know what I'm gonna grab this and take it home and I did really like it it reminded me how much I do like this so I think I will probably repurchase this again over the summer it's just it gives you that nice kind of glow without being self tanned you know it just gives a little bit of color to the skin really really hydrating like I said smells really good definitely recommend this I like the one for medium skin tones even though I'm quite fair I find the one for fair skin doesn't show up at all so if you're fair like me and you see that medium label and you're scared of it don't be it's so gradual it's such a gradual tan I do recommend however when you're using something like this make sure you're washing your hands afterwards there was a couple of times that I used this and I forgot to wash my hands after I put it on and I was filming a video and I could see that my hands were like orange <laughs> but just my palms so just make sure whenever you're using something like that to give your hands a good wash afterwards oh I went through another hand soap look at me go so this is the J.R. Watkins hand soap and this was the vanilla mint fragrance. I really liked this a lot. Vanilla mint, anything vanilla and anything mint. I love it. I love it so much. So when you combine those two scents, I'm on board. This is another drugstore cruelty-free brand. Um, it has no like phthalates, formaldehyde, dyes. It's one of those just like very simple ingredients. Um, really like this I would definitely repurchase it I would say that these are like a couple of my faves I also really like the method hand soaps the liquid type I think this is my last thing for sort of like body care miscellaneous type items so this is my favorite drugstore natural toothpaste so this is the hello activated charcoal epic whitening fluoride free toothpaste I really like this one. Um, I don't like the Tom's one. I, I like the Burt's Bees one okay, but I like this one a lot better. I find it like foams up in your mouth really nice the way you want a toothpaste to. A lot of the natural toothpastes don't really do that. They're just kind of like, like pasty in your mouth. <laughs> so this one really does get a nice kind of lather going on in there and it's very black. Like I don't know if you, yeah, you guys can see <laughs> there's like some residue on the outside. It's very black. So. I don't mind that. It's a little bit startling the first time you use it because even like I've used a lot of charcoal toothpaste, but this one is much blacker in your mouth than other ones that I've tried. Um, so I do recommend if you're using this to sort of give your sink a little bit of a wipe after you're done brushing your teeth because you will kind of get a little bit of a 
like gray tone <laughs> in your sink but i really like this i think it does a nice job whitening even though it's a natural toothpaste i like the fluoride free formula however they do have one with fluoride if you like to have fluoride in your toothpaste i don't it triggers dermatitis in my skin it's like a whole weird thing but i really like this one if you've been looking for a good drugstore toothpaste that's cruelty free i like that one a lot and then I always have one of these in every empties video. Sometimes I'm like, should I even be talking about this anymore? But if this is the first video you're coming to of mine, hi, I'm Jamie. <laughs> nice to meet you. Welcome to the channel. I love the Garnier Micellar Water. It's my favorite. I use this every single day to take my eye makeup off. It's the only thing that I can use on my eyes that doesn't irritate my eyes or leave like a film in my eyes. Um, I also use this in the mornings to sort of cleanse off my nightly skincare before I go in with my morning skincare rather than doing like a full cleanse. I use this for so many things. My husband likes to wash his face with this. It's just, it's just great. It's great. It's almost always on sale, super accessible, easy to get, cruelty free, all of the things. So transitioning more into like the skincare, I have a lot of skincare in here, you guys. I used up a lot. <laughs> I used up a lot this month. So eeny, meeny, miny, mo. let's talk about this one. So this is the Honest Beauty, Honestly Pure Retinol Serum. I really liked this. I got this at Shoppers Drug Mart. Um, I'm not sure where in the States, probably Ulta. You can probably get Honest Beauty. This is is this Jessica Alba's brand? She's so beautiful. <laughs> um, this came at a time where I think I was doing a shopper's online order. I was looking for a retinol. I had never tried this one before, but it sounded good to me. And I really liked this. I'm not sure like what the percentage of retinol in this is, but I didn't get any irritation from this. It was a little bit more of a like watery serum consistency. So I found it layered really well with my skincare at nighttime. Um, yeah, I really liked this a lot. I would definitely repurchase it. I don't think it was terribly expensive. It seems to me it was under like around $25 Canadian, so not terrible. And it lasted a good long time. The only thing about packaging like this, while I do like this, cause I don't have to worry about losing the cap. I always lose the caps. Um, you can't know like how much is in there. So I did find, I do find when I have products in packaging like this, I'm more likely to buy like backup products that I don't necessarily need. Cause I'm always like, well, what if today's the last day <laughs> that there's any left? But I did really like this. I think it did all of the things that you want a retinol to do and all of the things like it didn't do any of the things that you don't want your retinol to do. It didn't irritate my skin. I didn't get any dryness or flakiness or anything like that. However, I have been using retinol products for a number of years. So if you are new to retinol, I always recommend starting slow, just a couple of days a week to start. Maybe sandwich it between layers of moisturizer, you know, be cautious with retinol. But if you are you know, somebody that's been using retinol for a long time, I think that you would not be disappointed with this one. I've got a little like deluxe size sample of a cleanser here. So this is from La Roche-Posay. I wish, small rant coming, I wish La Roche-Posay would get on board with the whole cruelty-free movement. Like, can you just be cruelty-free? <laughs> that would be so great. This is such a great line if you have rosacea, if you have dermatitis, if you have reactive skin, if you have a damaged moisture barrier, if you're basically, if you're having any problems with your skin, I think La Roche-Posay has some really great products. This is the Tolerain uh, Dermal Cleanser and it was like a cream cleanser. It was uh, unscented. Uh, I bought this in a little kit. Um, a couple of years ago now when I was going through that whole, I, I went through a period of six months where I had perioral dermatitis all over my face and I was really struggling to find products that I could use that didn't make it worse. Um, so I did purchase a small La Roche-Posay kit off of Shoppers Drug Mart. I think it was like a holiday set and this was the cleanser that came in that. So this has been sitting in my medicine cabinet for a couple of years now. So I just decided it was time to use it up. I haven't had a dermatitis flare up in a long time. I'm hoping I have that like under control at this point, but I didn't want to just let this expire in my collection. Um, I think this is a nice alternative to like the CeraVe cleanser. Um, if you're not into CeraVe, this is another nice option. They often sell the La Roche-Posay products in like big jumbo sizes. Sometimes you can get um, like a duo of two cleansers. You know, they've got some good deals. I just wish they were cruelty free. They're not, so I will not be repurchasing this, um, but I did really like it. Another sort of cleanser slash makeup remover, I had this deluxe size sample of the Dermablend Makeup Dissolver. 
I don't know. I'm assuming I got this as like a free sample on like a shopper's order or maybe a Sephora order. I'm thinking a shopper's order. I don't think they sell this at Sephora. Anyways, again, this was just sitting in my cabinet unused for a very long time. I have been trying to run through some of my travel sizes of things because we haven't traveled in so long. Some of those products are getting a little old in that little drawer. So I whipped this out. I think I was out of my my cellar water. So I was like, well, I'll just use this up. I didn't love this. Um, it was very fragranced. <laughs> you guys know, you know how I feel about scents in skincare. It's interesting because now that I'm smelling the tube, I feel like it's not that fragranced, but I remember feeling like it was pretty fragranced. Anyways, all that to say, this did sort of give my skin like a stinging sensation when I rinsed it off. I couldn't use it around the eyes. It was kind of like a creamy texture. I just don't like that on the eyes. I want something really liquidy around my eyes, you know? Something like this, especially like in my eyelashes, I just feel like it gums up my eyelashes. And I don't know, I'm just not into a makeup remover like this. I know Dermablend is a brand that people really like. This is the only product I've ever tried from them and I, I wouldn't repurchase it. Another makeup remover. <laughs> Apparently I went through a lot of removers. So this is the Elemis Superfood AHA Glow Cleansing Butter. I really liked this. I like Elemis products. I've seen a lot of conflicting information about whether or not they're cruelty free. However, I did get this in a boxy charm, so I didn't go out and purchase it myself. Um, it wasn't heavily fragranced, which I've noticed quite a bit of the Elemis products are heavily fragranced. This one wasn't. It was a really interesting, I mean, it was called a cleansing butter. It very much was like a buttery texture, very different from your typical cleansing balm, like that balmy texture that we're more used to. I really liked this a lot. It did have those AHAs in there. While I never do use a cleansing butter or balm around my eyes, you definitely wouldn't want to use this one around your eyes. I think it would really irritate your eyes. You could definitely feel like when I would apply this to the skin and then add a little bit of water before I would remove it, I could definitely feel a little bit of that AHA like tingling sensation on the face, which I really like. So I felt like I was getting like A, a double cleanse, but B, a little bit of a double exfoliation in a very like manageable light way. I really liked this a lot. I do, I, I would recommend it if you're into the Elemis brand and you're looking for a good like first step cleanser. I really liked this a lot. I enjoyed it to the very end. I wouldn't repurchase this per se but I did enjoy it while I had it if you got this in a boxy charm and you're sitting on it definitely use it it's a good one this looks disgusting okay <laughs> for a minute I was like what is this it doesn't even look familiar this is the earth harbor aqua aura reparative eye cream this has completely changed color in the jar like the little bits that are left look at the color of that it was like a minty green oh <gasps> gross I did not like this eye cream. Okay, so we'll start with that. I don't know exactly what I didn't like about this. There wasn't anything specific that I was like, oh, I don't like the way it feels or I don't like the way it smells or I don't like the way it made my skin look. I just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy using it. I didn't notice any difference in like my dark circles or my puffiness or anything like that when I was using this. It just was a very... It was like a placeholder in my collection. So I whipped this out when I was out of eye cream. And then as soon as I got other eye creams in BoxyCharms, I started using like a lot of this, trying to use it up because I just didn't like it. So I can't really say, like I said, I, I don't really know what I didn't like about it, but I definitely don't recommend it. And look, that's only been in the box for like a month. <laughs> I'm really glad that I stopped using that when I did. I feel like maybe it was right on the edge of turning. This is my beef with eye creams that come in jars. Like you're sticking your finger in this jar for a significant amount of time because eye cream lasts a long time. Oh my gosh, I have to stop looking at the inside. That's really grossing me out. Um, but I just wish all eye creams would come in like like a squeezy tube type of for, like format. Anyways, don't recommend this one. Definitely wouldn't repurchase. One that I did really like was the Alaya Skin Vitamin C Supercharged Serum. I really liked this. This was a really nice product. So they sent me this their whole line, um, oh my gosh, over a year ago anyways. I did a whole dedicated video to the Alaya skincare products. You can purchase them um, at Shoppers Drug Mart now, um, but you can also, they like started out on Instagram. They're an Australian brand, cruelty-free. Um, they have a very kind of 
I don't want to say basic skincare line because I feel like that's an insult, but it's a very streamlined line and I've liked a lot of the products that I've tried from them, but this was definitely one of my favorites. So it was a vitamin C serum, but it was also a hyaluronic acid serum. So I like to use vitamin C during the day, but I also like to use hyaluronic acid during the day. So this was almost like the perfect serum because it was a one step, one and done. I would put my toner on, I would put this on to dampen the skin, moisturizer, sunscreen, done one serum and it did it all. I really, really liked that. I didn't like the smell so much of the Alaya products or anything in there. Oh, the tiniest amount. It has like a, it's a little bit floral. It's not an unpleasant smell. It's just like not my favorite smell. You know, it doesn't linger on the skin though. It's not overpowering. I don't think there's added fragrance per se. I think it's just the smell of some of the ingredients. But if you see this product and you're looking for a good like vitamin C, hyaluronic, you know, just kind of all in one serum. I think this is a really good one. Really, really enjoyed that one. Another serum that I actually did like was this one from Glam Glow. This is a, another like deluxe sample size. So this is their super serum and it says it's a six acid refining treatment. So this is going to be like an AHA type of exfoliator and it had kind of a, I don't know if you can see on the nozzle, it had kind of like a black color to it. So I don't know if there was also some like charcoal in there maybe, but I really liked this. Um, I think I got this, I must've gotten this as a deluxe size sample through Shoppers Drug Mart, but I really, really liked it. Again, I was just trying to use up some of my travel sizes of things. I would actually consider buying the full size of this. I find this to be pretty comparable to like the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow. It's kind of comparable to the ordinary lactic acid that I'm using right now, only this has like more types of AHAs in there than just lactic acid. So really, really like this. If you are a fan of the Glam Glow products or you were looking for a good AHA serum, I think this is a nice option. I'll have everything linked as always in the description box down below. Another little serum that I used up was this one from Neostrata. So this one was sent to me. This is their Lip Wrinkle Repair Serum. Um, I, I liked this. I didn't... It had a lot of bold claims. I, I talked about this in a speed reviews. It said something ridiculous, like it reduces your wrinkles around your lips by like 80% or some crazy thing. I don't, I don't think that that's true. <laughs> I, it's not magic in a tube, but I did really find that this helped really hydrate the area around the mouth. I found particularly this winter, um, you know, two years into wearing masks 10 hours a day, really started to take a toll on my lips and I was definitely getting some dryness, not just on my lips, but the area around my mouth. Um, and I felt like this really did help to sort of nourish that area and bring it back to life. So I would use this morning and night. I, like I said, I didn't really notice a difference in terms of the wrinkles around my mouth. I do have a fair bit of lines around my mouth. I am in my mid thirties. I smoked for many years and you know, it is what it is. Um, but I did really find that this felt nice, really nourished that area. So I do like it. However, Neostrata is not cruelty free. They've sent me a few products. Sometimes they send me products and I'm like, uh, I like it, but it's not cruelty free and I don't want to recommend it. So, you know, if you're not a cruelty free shopper and you're looking for something like this, I do think it's a nice product. I would not be repurchasing it. However, I would be interested in finding something comparable in a cruelty-free line. Next up, I have a moisturizer that I used up. So this is the Dr. Brandt Triple Antioxidant Face Cream. I really liked this. I got this in a boxy charm. Um, this was kind of another like all-in-one type of product because it's got all the antioxidants in there, but it was a nice moisturizer. It was kind of a lightweight product. So it wasn't a gel, but it wasn't a cream. It was almost like partway between the two, which was really perfect for my like oily combo skin, particularly in the daytime. I really liked this as a daytime moisturizer. I did use it at nighttime as well. I would just layer a, a facial oil on top of it to sort of seal everything in, but I really liked this. Again, I got it in a boxy charm. I probably won't repurchase it, but I did enjoy it. I had this little deluxe size sample of this Jane Airedale Lemongrass Love Hydration Spray. I think you could have used this as it says spritz to hydrate skin and or set mineral powders. It was like pretty wet and kind of an aggressive 
there's not enough in there to even spray it. It was kind of an aggressive sprayer, so I didn't try it out as like a setting spray, but I did really like it as like a facial mist. I always like to use something hydrating as like a mist underneath of like a hyaluronic acid serum. You always want to apply hyaluronic acid to dampened skin, so I find a hydrating mist in my medicine cabinet with my skincare to be a very useful item. So I did use this up in that way. Um, I did really like it. I wouldn't repurchase it. The Jane Yardell products are quite expensive. So for something like this, I don't think it would really be worth it. If I was going to buy something out of their range, I would buy a, a piece of makeup, probably one of their mineral powders or something. But this was nice. I did enjoy it. If you're a fan of their products, this is a nice hydrating mist. Another hydrating mist that I really liked was this Clean Skin Club uh, Pineapple Glow Mist. This has hyaluronic acid, peptides, and antioxidants in there. I love the packaging on this. I just think it looked so beautiful. It's got that like ombre glass bottle really really pretty really enjoyable to use it didn't have a strong pineapple scent which i appreciate because i don't like pineapple um but i again i just found this was a really nice hydrating mist to layer on underneath of my serums um, or to refresh the skin or what have you the mister was really nice i definitely got this in a boxy charm so if you see this in like a boxy pop-up sale I would grab it. I think it's a really good one. I think I've seen it on there for like $6. It's a really nice product. And then lastly for skincare, I have a sunscreen that I used up. So this one was also sent to me by Stylevana. They're like a similar retailer to like Yes Style. They carry a lot of Korean beauty brands and this was one of them. So this is the Caranel No Sebum Perfect UV Shield. And this is an SPF 50. This is a physical sunscreen and this was an SPF 50. I really liked this. I liked it and I didn't like it. Here's the thing. <laughs> I felt like this offered really good sun prote protection. Um, I've been using this. I used this for so long that I was like, it's weird that it's not gone. I used like quite a bit of it every time that I used it. Um, I really felt like this really protected my skin. Um, it blended in pretty easily. It didn't leave a major residue on my skin. It didn't make my skin feel oily. It layered well with all of my makeup, my primers, my other skincare. The only thing is the white cast, you guys. The white cast was... It was pretty intense. I felt like when I first started using this, I was like, the white cast isn't that bad. But I feel like that was just compared to other... <laughs> strong white cast sunscreens but the longer I use this the more I was like no it really does have like a pretty strong white cast so if you have a fair skin like mine you can make something like this work especially if you're going to put like a tinted moisturizer or foundation or whatever over top if you have a darker skin tone than me I don't think this is going to work for you I think it's going to really show up on your skin and I think you're going to be unhappy about it so it's one of those things sunscreens for me I have an acne prone skin type I really only can use a physical block I can't use a chemical sunscreen so it's kind of like the price you pay oftentimes with this type of a sunscreen you're often going to get that white cast I know there's some out there that don't have much of a white cast but more often than not they do so it's one of those things um, use at your own risk but if you do have a fair skin type I think that you can usually kind of make it work but this really did offer great sun protection I used this all of last summer and I didn't get a burn on my face one time not once so and I love to be outside so I think this is a good sunscreen I would be interested to try maybe some other sunscreens off of the Stylevana site I've heard some good things about some other K-beauty brands that maybe are less of a white cast um, but I liked the way that this felt on my skin because it had that no sebum aspect to it. It was really good for oily skin. And then I have a few, just a few makeup items. You know how it goes. It's usually mostly skincare and then a couple of makeup items at the end. So first of all, I've got a couple of mascaras in here. And the first one I want to talk about is this damn Huda Beauty sample thingy. This was the legit lashes sample. This was the worst mascara I have ever tried in terms of transfer. I used this one time and threw it into this bin. So I, I like the wand on it. It's got that little curved wand. I do like that. It offered lots of volume and length and all of the things. This gave me raccoon eyes in like 2.5 seconds and it lasted all damn day. It was so annoying. <laughs> I was so frustrated. I had the worst makeup day that day um, because as soon as I got to work, I looked in the mirror and my mascara was all underneath of my eyes. And so all day long, I'm like wiping that off and repowdering my under eyes by the, like cool it with your truck out there. 
Yeah, everybody thinks you're cool with your truck that's really noisy. By the end of the day, my under eyes looked so cakey and dry. It was like the Sahara Desert down there. It was so bad um, just because I kept having to powder and touch up and it was just a mess. So if you have any issues with transfer with your mascara at all, I would steer far away from the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes formula. One that I really liked that you can also get at Sephora is the Merit Mascara. So this is their Perfect Black Lengthening Mascara. I loved this. Okay. Here's the thing. This was a very wet formula. When I first opened it, it didn't offer a ton of volume. It did give nice length, nice separation, no clumpiness. This didn't transfer under my eyes once, not once. The entire time that I was using this mascara, I forgot that like mascara transfer was a thing. It was perfect, but it also was pretty easy to remove. It's not like a waterproof formula. It came off like fairly easily with my micellar water. That's something that's really important to me with mascara. I don't wanna be pulling my eyelashes out trying to get my mascara off at the end of the day. Um, but as this aged, it aged like a fine wine, my friends. This just got better as time went on. Because it was such a wet formula, I felt like I got such a long use out of this. You know, when you have a drier formula of mascara after like a month, you're like, well, I could just replace this. It's pretty much dried out. <laughs> This is like half dried out when you opened it because this was so wet. I used this longer than I would typically use a mascara for. I usually go two, three months max on a mascara. This still, like this is still like juicy. Like you could still be using this. There's mascara in there. However, <laughs> my eyes will let me know when it is time to replace my mascara. I wanna say I probably used this for five months and I started getting like really irritated eyes the last few times that I used this. I was like, okay, 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 I'll get rid of it, fine. <laughs> but this was a really good one. So if you're looking for a good mascara at Sephora that is worth the money, I think this is great, especially if you like a wetter formula, but even if you don't, if you just let this age the perfect amount of time, you're gonna be so happy with it. Just like volume, length, it's buildable, it doesn't transfer, it doesn't give you like insane spidery clumpy volume, it just gives you that nice fluttery volume. Um, I really enjoyed this, I liked it a lot, highly recommend. I've got an empty brow gel here, this is the Benefit Gimme Brow, I don't know what shade it's in, all of the writing has worn off. <laughs> This is the problem with that benefit packaging. It just wears off. Now this probably does have a little bit still in there, but it was just kind of getting to that point where I just kept having to like dip it in and brush it through and dip it in and brush it through and dip it in and brush it through. And I just, I don't like that. I, once it gets to that point, I'm over it. <laughs> I usually have a couple of other like brow gels bouncing around in my vanity anyways, but I did enjoy this just fine. I definitely got it in a boxy charm. I didn't go out and purchase this myself. I wouldn't repurchase this. I like the Essence Make Me Brow just as well. I like the e.l.f. Wow Brow just as well. I'm using the Merit Brow Gel right now. I like that one too. I'm not super fussy when it comes to brow gels, so I generally will go for the drugstore option whenever I can, just because if I like the drugstore option just as well as the Sephora option, why wouldn't I go for the drugstore one, right? So this was just fine. If you've been eyeing this, I think it's okay. Like, I mean, it's like I say, there's nothing wrong with it. I just think there's other more affordable options that are essentially the same product. Another usual suspect, I have the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in the shade Soft Blonde. This is my most used, probably, these are my two probably most repurchased products of all time. Um, I always have a micellar water from Garnier and I always have a CoverGirl brow pencil on the go. I have this in my brows today. I love it so much. It's the perfect shade for me. I find like something about like the NYX taupe formula is like it pulls a little bit weirdly warm on me. This is like that perfect kind of ashy like there's just enough it's like an ashy kind of light brown color I know it's called soft blonde you can definitely use this if you're blonde that's like a pretty heavy you know swatch um, I find I can do this really lightly through my brows on no makeup makeup days I can build it up more like what I have done today with like a brow gel depending on what kind of a brow you're looking for but this is kind of always my base of my brows and then I add other things if I want them to be a little bit bolder but I love this so much if you haven't tried the CoverGirl brow pencils I think they're some of the best ones at the drugstore and they go on sale super often 
And then last but not least, I have a setting spray here. This is the Sorme Set Skin Treatment Formula Setting Spray with apple peptides. Um, I bought this at Cosmoprof. Uh, I bought this in the summertime. I was doing a bunch of like weddings and makeup for clients and I needed a setting spray that I knew was going to really lock the makeup in. I think this does a really good job of that. I find it to be very comparable in that way to the Urban Decay All Nighter. Um, however, I don't find this dries the skin out the same way that that one does. It doesn't have the um, denatured alcohol as like your second ingredient in there. Actually, there's no denatured alcohol in this at all. Um, so it, it really does kind of set everything down and take that powdery look away, but it really locks the makeup in without having to have that drying factor. So if you have access to the Sorme products and you're looking for a good setting spray, I think this is a really good one. It also lasted me a long time. So really loved that. We'll definitely repurchase. I've got a couple of setting sprays, you know, on the go right now, but if I was to run out again, I would definitely repurchase this. That's it, you guys. That's all my empties. I feel like we ran through them pretty fast pretty fast, all things considered. There was a lot there. <laughs> so let me know in the comments down below if you've tried any of these, if you had your eye on any of these. I always love to chat with you guys in the comments. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I will have my empties playlist linked in the description box down below if you want to see more videos like this. Make sure you're subscribed because I do post empties videos every other month or so. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye!